What if you could host your own secure website completely free using hardware you already have? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. We'll walk through setting up a self-hosted website with a custom domain, secure SSH, and SSL encryption, all running from your own home server or VM. But before we get into the video, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who's been liking, subscribing, and commenting. The feedback's been super helpful. A few of you mentioned that the camera was a little bit shaky, and don't you worry, that's going to be completely fixed going forward. I've also had a couple people mention that they're good on the hardware side of things, but software is where they like to focus a little bit more, like DNS and port forwarding. So this video here, I'm going to focus a little bit more on that for you guys. And for those of you asking about Jellyfin and TrueNAS, don't you worry. Those are going to be coming in some future videos, and we're just going to start with the foundation in this one, getting our own web server spun up and making sure the hardware is running. So let's jump on in. Before we start setting up the website, we need a system to host it on. For this project, I'm using a virtual machine inside Proxmox, but you could use VirtualBox, VMware, or even install directly to bare metal if you want. In Proxmox, I'm creating a new VM and mounting the latest Ubuntu server ISO. And we're going to name it Web Server. And set it up with 20 gigabytes of storage. I'm giving it two CPU cores. and 4 gigs of RAM. You can leave the network card as default, and then select Start After Created. Up next, we're going to go through the Ubuntu server installation. Selecting the language, defining a host name, creating a user, and afterwards setting up SSH server. Start by selecting Try or Install Ubuntu Server. Once the initial installer runs, it'll ask you to select your default language. Press enter to confirm your keyboard configuration, and once again to select the Ubuntu server install. Here we're going to have to configure your network interface. Start by selecting Edit IPv4, and then go to the manual setup. We want to configure it to run on the subnet designated for it. Mine's going to be on 10.10.10.0. If you're running this on your home system and not planning on doing any network segmentation, just type in ipconfig on your command prompt, or ipa if you're on Linux, and you can find your IP addressing from there. Your typical address is going to be something like 192.168.0.0. Set your name server to something default and easy, like 8.8.8.8 .8 or 1.1.1.1. Select save, and then done. We can skip through the next set of sections, because these ones are fine to leave as default. Add in your basic information. And don't enable Ubuntu Pro, we don't need that. Now we're going to skip on the install OpenSSH server and do that after the fact, because if we go this way, we're only going to get options to get our SSH key from GitHub or from Launchpad for the moment. This here is a list of server snaps. Because we're going to be doing a custom web server, I'm going to leave these off as well. Press done and let the installation proceed. Once the installation is complete and the VM reboots, we can log in and check that everything's working. From here, we'll start getting the web server online. Let's first get the system updated. Run sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade y.
Next, we need to install Apache, our web server. You can do that by running sudo apt install apache2. Once it's installed, your server will start serving a default web page on port 80, but right now that's only visible inside your local network. So the next step is to set up port forwarding on your router to allow traffic from the internet to reach this web server. Start by logging into your router. Your router IP will always be point 0.1, so in my case mine's 10.10.10.1. Yours will probably be 192.168.0.1. Then you're going to want to navigate over to your firewall and NAT settings. For the port, you're going to want to select 80, and then the IP address is going to be the IP for the server that's hosting the website. So in my case, 10.10.10.110. While we're at it, I'm going to make a second rule for port 443, so I automatically open up my SSL port. Now, if I put in my public IP, I should be able to reach my website. So, so far we've set up our Ubuntu VM, we've installed our Apache server, and we've port forwarded our server to allow it to have access to the internet. Next, we're going to set up our public domain name so that your users don't have to connect just by your IP address. Log on into your domain provider. I'm using Ionos for honestly no particular reason. And then navigate over to the section where all of your records are contained. You want to add an A record with the value www and the IP address that you're pointing it towards. Once you see that the A record's been successfully created, there's one more step that we need to take care of. We need to tell Apache which domain this site is for. Open up the default config file with sudo nano etc apache2 sites available 000-default.conf. Inside the virtual host 80 block, add the line server name and then your domain. Save the file, then reload apache with sudo systemctl reload apache2. This step helps ensure that your site is properly matched to incoming domain requests and it's also required to install SSL. Now let's head to our domain and make sure that it's up and running. With our domain now pointing at our server and Apache configured, it's time to lock things down with SSL encryption. This step not only secures your traffic, but it's also critical if you want modern browsers to trust your web server. We'll start by installing CertBot and the Apache plugin. Once it's installed, run the certbot command to automatically configure SSL for your Apache site. Certbot will prompt you to choose the domain name. Make sure the domain is already pointing to your server and listed in Apache's config. It'll now go ahead and automatically configure SSL for us. Refreshing our page, we can see that we're all secure. And just like that, you're set up. You now have your own web server running on your own hardware with SSL encryption, your own custom domain, and it's available to the public. With our website now up and running securely over HTTPS, the next thing we want to do is have a reliable way to remotely manage the server. And the best tool for that is SSH with Keybase Login. This lets us access the server from anywhere securely, and it's a core part of home lab management. Let's get it set up. First, let's make sure OpenSSH is installed and running. It usually is by default, but just in case, let's run sudo apt install openssh-server-y. Then check its status with sudo systemctl status ssh. Now on your main machine, we'll generate an ssh key. This is the secure credential you'll use to log into the server. Hit enter to accept the defaults. And you can add a passphrase here in case you want an extra layer of protection.
Once the key is created, send it over to your server. And now we'll log back in to set the rest of it up. Now that we're logged back in, first we're going to make our .ssh folder. Set the permissions to make sure that your user owns it. And then set the .ssh directory permissions as 700. And then we'll put the contents of our public key into the authorized keys file. Move the authorized keys file into the .ssh folder. And then we'll set the permissions on it to be 600. Now try logging in, this time no password needed. Instead, it'll ask you for a passphrase, which is much more secure than a password or just your SSH key alone. With HTTPS enabled and secure key-based authentication, our web server is completely secured and ready for secure remote management. This gives us a solid foundation for starting and running our own services in our home lab. Whether it's a personal blog, a custom dashboard, or you're just experimenting with web hosting. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing. I've got a lot more home lab content on the way. Let me know in the comments if you're hosting your own website. I'd love to check it out for myself and maybe share a few of them. I'll see you in the next one.